We are back with the SPL week number four and game number two here on Saturday afternoon. And we've got another close one with the Knights taking on the Renegades. Six and seven, respectively, in the standings. One and three for both teams. So this is a matchup where both teams will be looking to leapfrog one another when it comes to the standings. Well, it's our second matchup of the day and our second close matchup of the day. Knights, Renegades. Let's kick off game number one. And normally I'd also be looking at the fact that he can walk through walls and at least like get not body blocked as something big because that could help him get away from games. Early gank here from Cubo Fred. The knockup was there from Neil Ma and Cubo cleans it up. And now some pressure onto the blue buff. This is Renegades looking for a potential buff invade onto the order side of the map. Scary D and Cubo both here, so it's just a two on two. But Scary a bit lower on HP, pulled back in by Lazbra, who's had a great season so Ooh. far, but it could all come tumbling down here. Solar Troll makes it a one for one, but that's huge. They got that kill on the Lazbra, and Cubo Fred is still alive. And I think Doug highlighted this earlier on that the Glad Shield was the first pickup for Awesome Jake, so he's delayed. What I'm assuming is still going to be a Gauntlet of Thieves for him pretty mm. late into his build. He's still going to need to stack that up if that is what he ends up electing to pick up in that third slot as well. So he's going to be way behind Neil, who already has his evolved and is working on what looks like a Pride Wind behind it. But now there's aggression. Awesome Jake has been knocked up. And remember, he's not nearly as tanky as you would normally expect at this point. So it's aggression from Cubo Fred. But Awesome Jake makes it out, so Scary D comes in to pick up the mantle. But they lose Cubo Fred for its support for jungle. Has to favor Renegades. Now, Benenu might be able to hunt down Zatman. Can't find the stun, but does get some good damage, and they force the Knights to retreat. Because he's, like we've pointed out, not worth as much as you're going to get. Even from killing someone like Neil, getting rid of the Bacchus opens up a lot of opportunities. I do think it takes away some control. But unfortunately, you got to find that control elsewhere if you lose your solo, or your support, I should say. And I don't think Scary's going to walk out of this one happy, but neither is Lazbra. No, Scary is still in trouble. Solar Troll gets the credit for it, but while all that was happening, the Gold Fury went down in favor of the Knights. So that have done, you know, immense measures for his team, specifically around the Gold Furies. So now he, they're, in my eyes, for Renegades, going to need to figure out how to deal with this Amaterasu, because otherwise, it's free pickings. Kivo Fred goes aggressive for purple. There was backup from Lasper and Barracuda. They both get hit by the Typhoon, but they do manage to find the stun as well. That was Zatman that came in with the axe and guarantees that Lasper falls. Now that's his third death, and Vera stuck on an island. No ultimate to, able, to enable his escape, and Zatman gets a second kill. Not in time for the double, but still two in this fight. We were worried about the Thebes earlier on, but it is now stacked and ready to go for Awesome Jake. Just in time is the fight kicking off in the jungle. Solar Troll is the target of it, but he brushes off much of the damage. In fact, the Knights took a bit more than they bargained for, so they're on the disengage, but Lazbra's made his way in. A big Ooh. Typhoon, but he's the one that gets blown up. Now Benenu is here playing the part of the Pele, looking for damage, but Cubo Fred is that much better. He gets a double kill. Solar Troll does make it up to the sky and should be able to disengage, but they've already lost the entirety of their backline. And, I mean, I was looking at the map. Zap is incredibly low, but he oh, managed to get out of it. Scary D. He, he doesn't get, get in there. Finch, it's all falling apart. It's Scary D who ends up or finding that last kill. Loops around, finds SOT. Paul catches oh. up to all Jake in the jungle, so it ends up being a full-on DS side. And you've already split, pl spent plenty of time talking about Merlin's objective burn damage. So now, even without Neil Ma here, perhaps they can feel comfortable trying to start up this FG. They just need for Scary D to be the tank for it. And then Zapman and Paul can provide plenty of burn. Look how quickly it's going down. You know, obviously a lot of us thought that it was Neil or, or that it was Sam, but I think a lot of attention should be paid to formerly Bel Air, now back again to this scary D, and, and, and a lot of what he's been able to do is now he pressures Venenu. The tier 2 tower and left already dropped, and that was enough to get Venenu to use the Changeling ultimate. I think he turned into the Amaterasu, so that ultimate's on cooldown, and now the Knights don't even have to worry. The left side Phoenix already being threatened. They may have lost the Oma, but they got what they came for. Now they have to make sure they can find the disengage, even with SOT here. The Frenzy popped as well. They definitely are happy taking this little skirmish so Cubo Fred dies into the backline. A double kill as Venenu and SOT go down. Too much damage for Barracuda who gets under the horse, but Zetman doesn't miss. The bladed arrow cuts him down, and now they're threatening the Titan. This just might be the game, Gore. I mean, it's not looking really good. Awesome Jake's the only one left standing to try and defend, and well, he, we've touched on it a few times, but I don't know if he has everything in his kit to be able to do so. So the Knights being able to walk away. 
Well, Pittsburgh Knights take game one in about 25 minutes. Can they follow up in game two? Finch and Gormizer will tell us. It could potentially be bad. Kivo Fred does have the blink. SOT said in that interview when he talked to him, Gore, that he was ready for a potentially early game gank happening on him, but I don't know if he was ready for double assassins in his lane playing yeah. a mage. That first blood for the knights happening, and SOT really never stood a chance there. He's got blink as his first relic. This early game deficit has hamstrung the entirety of the map for the Renegades. Yeah, it's made it a lot easier to know where to put the pressure on. In fact, Scary D doesn't Ooh. even need the help. He forces the ult, and honestly, Solar Patrol's just going, well, who's got the most mobility? How can I run away here? But it's still too much. Even with the Changeling ultimate, Scary D finds that solo kill, but it's a question of can he escape? He's committed all of his resources. That was so good that Lasbra got him back underneath the tier two, so they'll at least shut him down. That's a big bonus, but now can they get for the blue buff? This is great work from Austin Jake inside the Draconic Corruption. He's even brought Cubo Fred down low, so Veninu dashes in, finds the stun before Neil Ma can flop back out, but Lasbra keeps going, hunts down Cubo Fred. Veninu blows up Neil Ma, and finally, this aggression from the Knights gets answered. Ooh. It is, and Lasbra found the key punish that, that made sure that Scary D ended up dying. But to me, that's not even the big highlight. For me, it's awesome Jake's work there as Lasbra does catch Zapman near the Gold Fury. Paul is in some trouble here too, so he can get collapsed on by three members. Lasbra does good work with the last breath to force Paul to retreat, but Zapman shows up. The Wild Hunt claims the life of Lasbra, and just as we were singing his praises, he ends up taking a spill. Yet again, have gotten what they wanted and left. And while Scary D is still technically in a position, actually low on mana, this might be a kill. It might be. Big Typhoon ends up coming through as well, and Lasbrook gets the kill onto Scary D. But Neomaw still wants some fighting on the back end. They lock down SOT inside all that Merlin damage from Paul, and he can't make it out. What about Awesome Jake? He still has Draconic Corruption, and he's stuck in between a couple members, but he's plenty tanky. I wonder if Awesome Jake just does not like Gauntlet of Thieves. He went Glad Shield over it last time. This time it's the Sovereignty and the Spellbound Kusari. But then he avoids the aggression there from Neil Ma. But Kubo Fred is lurking behind the Tier 1. Blinks in, and Awesome Jake's become the target. There's the ultimate coming out that should buy him some time. But Kubo Fred, target swaps over to Vivinenu. Can't get him either. Neil Ma continues to step forward even though he's low. And Renegades make it out without losing any extra lives. Oh, and I love this, because Zap keeps the pressure going on the tower. They need it to be able to trade out with Vera, but it's also in a position to let Kuvo run free in the jungle. Where are you going to go? You're going to try to contend over this speed buff? It's not looking good, but Kuvo may be biting off more than he can chew, because Vin's going to rotate over, and he still gets the kill! He gets the kill. SOT finally is able to blink in and punish Kuvo Fred for it, since he did just make his way through on that top side of the fight to end up helping out. But still, we're seeing that the Knights are the ones that are largely the aggressors in every single one of these fights. They have plateaued a bit in terms of that golden experience lead, but this is going to help out with it when they add the Pyromancer onto their list of accolades. And they're even going to start up the Fire Giant. This is how little they're worried about the Renegades coming in and expecting this. Solar Troll is nearby. How does he not notice that any of this is going on? He's just chilling on the blue buff. He's got to come in and do something about this. Now he's starting to make his presence known, but he just goes to lane. They don't want to contest the FG at all. Now, the question has to come down to, did they not notice it, or did they make the call to not go in on it? SOT well, should have noticed. Might be able, yeah, I was going to say, you could you could hear it, you could see it walking back to lane. You might lose Scary D in the process, although Kamazov's showing his survivability once again. This is a good rotation from the Knights. That's good sustaining. Neil Ma comes in to provide the support, and even if he dies here, that's good. You much rather have Solar or Troll live than Neil Ma in that scenario. So he does that key bit of peel that gets a Scary D out of there, even though it doesn't cost Neil Ma his life. But so whether or not he noticed it, I like him not going in there because the low chance of a steal, even with stealth, isn't going to be enough for you. And fortunately, this time though, Scary D, it's just too deep. Yeah, he still didn't have an ult to get back out of there, so Solar or Troll gets an easy kill there on him. I wonder how he ended up getting that far back. His TP's on cooldown, maybe that was it, as Kibo Fred finds the kill on to Solar or Troll. Renegades were kind of the aggressors, though. They had grouped up around the Fury. They wanted it in trade for the FG they'd given up, but they still can't do it. Not with Neil Ma, Paul, and Zetman all lurking nearby, so Renegades end up dropping the actual Fury itself. And it hasn't necessarily done as much in Game 1 or in Game 2 to make a big difference. Now the Knights are able to maybe force them into a fight they don't want. 
They grab the Oni Fury now. Awesome Jake stuck in no man's land. He's going to get the ultimate off, but land down in a world of pain. Zapman gets the kill credit for it. So that evens up the kills at seven apiece. Lucky, lucky. But what about the fight on the backside? Scary D takes a ton of damage in bargain for and dies up in the air thanks to the last breath. But still, he earns enough for the team. Cubo Fred gets Barracuda, makes it a double by finding the second kill in the Venenu. And Zapman wants to get involved as well as he takes care of SOT. Suddenly, it's just Lazbra up to try and defend for 20 seconds before Awesome Jake gets back. At the very least, that's a left side Phoenix. Yeah, and I love this because they have the Oni minion wave still pushing down. They don't have to worry about pressure in some of the other lanes. That is going to push up on its own. That's way too much time to run to the Fire Giant. You get this Phoenix, you've got an Oni wave, and then soon enough, the, well, one wave, end. and then Fire Minions. Are they going to push for it? Well, they've got really low health bars. This is certainly risky if the Knights yeah. want to call for it, and I think that's why they're backing up your gore. They okay. were too low. <laughs> awesome Jake just respawned, and they can't do it. I don't know where else their initiation is. It's almost all on this Kamazots and all depending on Lazbra, and it hasn't been consistent enough. Not much there as Neomob blinks in and drops the ultimate, but they've got Venenu isolated over on the right side, and they get that Agni easy. He even dumps all the bombs, and it's still nowhere near enough damage to make the Knights hesitate. And look at this pathing from Scary D. He's going for the long-term loop around to try and catch out some stragglers. Awesome Jake transforms, but yet again, all he's really doing is setting himself up for disaster. That's two for zero in favor of the Knights. And I don't know if you're, even as a Sir Ket, can jump back there and feel safe about it. In fact, I would say, especially as Sir Ket, you feel unsafe trying to do that. No, I don't think there's much room for the Renegades to try and take care of Scary V at this point, or for Lasper really to find much room to move in. They step into the mid Phoenix, or our left Phoenix is back up, but it's really weak at this point. And in right side, Fire Minion should already be pouring. Scary D is going to back TP back in with a full HP bar. Meanwhile, the Renegades start to buckle a bit. They already have to send Venenu back to base, so without those Agni bombs, Pittsburgh Knights can afford to step in. Awesome Jake tries to step That's forward, right. but we've already seen this story. The second he comes back down from the ultimate, he's going to die. I think that's why we don't see much Fafnir anymore these days. Can they continue to threaten the mid Phoenix? So Scary D is lurking in the back, waiting to try and catch him out. Cubo Fred goes to take the 1v1 up against Lazarus. Said, I saw you lurking. We're going to kick you out of here. Not much that he's going to be able to do. Meanwhile, mid Phoenix continues to get threatened. Scary D now hunting down Lazarus. He does get the blink off, but left Phoenix falls. Barracuda ends up dropping, and that should be it for mid Phoenix as well. And with Fire Minions pouring in on the right-hand side, three kills, mid Phoenix down. I don't know, Finch, this is this is not something you come back from if you're Renegades. No, nah, this should be the end of the game. It's just a question of will the Renegades get anything else on it before the final curtain falls. Venenu drops as well. The Titan is down too low. The Minions are swarming, and the Pittsburgh Knights find a clean 2-0.